Hello again, Callum Brown for 74XX. You've heard me mention the Mr. FPGA project several times as something I think could help to replace arcade PCBs as they start to fail in the coming years. If you're unfamiliar, the Mr. FPGA project is an open source software project that's based on the DE10 Nano FPGA Evaluation Board from TerraSic and Intel. The project provides a framework upon which you can deploy cores to the FPGA on the board that allows you to simulate many different computer systems such as retro computers, classic gaming consoles, and even arcade PCBs. The FPGA board is quite capable right out of the box with USB input, HDMI output, and SD card slot for storage, but there are also many hardware add-on modules that you can get. Examples might include RAM upgrades or controller adapters, but one common add-on is a case. There are many cases available already, of course. Some are acrylic, some are metal, but I thought I could create my own case integrating the peripherals that I would be using in my particular setup, uh, mostly with CRTs as opposed to LCD monitors. So let's take a look at what I came up with. Take a closer look. So overall, I was going for a modern take on a wedge style computer case like an Amiga or an Atari ST. Uh, but specifically, I was thinking about an Apple IIc, which is the computer I had when I started collecting classic computers many years ago. So I found a USB keyboard that was the size I wanted and had um, you know, spacing between the keys that kind of looked like that Apple IIc and built everything else around it. Let's take a look at the ports uh, on the front and back. On the front, we have four USB ports for controllers and maybe a wireless mouse. And we have the SD card slot over here for all your storage. And around back, we have an HD15, AKA VGA port for analog video, a 1 8 inch stereo jack for analog audio, we have one more USB port for something you just don't want to show around the front or uh, say powering another device, for example, a PGA splitter. We have Ethernet network here and the main power switch and the DC barrel jack, which is five volts at about two amps. Towards the rear, we have the SDRAM cartridge. Um, SDRAM is required for many cores and putting it on a cartridge is just for fun. I was thinking of say a Sega Saturn RAM cartridge when I decided to put it in here and it sits right above the DE10 Nano so that the cartridge actually fits right onto the header. Next we have the display for the MT32 Pi which is a Roland MT32 uh, sound module emulator that works on a Raspberry Pi that's hidden underneath the keyboard here. So it's connected directly to the Mister, and the Mister can send MIDI messages to the MT32 Pi, and it can send um, audio back to the Mister, which comes back out over the regular audio port. A great many DOS games and some Amiga games use the MT32, so I wanted to include the display for it there. And finally, I decided to add a beverage holder, which is something that has been ignored in console design since the Atari 5200, maybe the only thing that console got right. I started this project soon after getting my first 3D printer, which was an Ender 3. It had a roughly 220 by 220 by 250 millimeter build volume. Uh, this was much smaller than the size of the case I designed. So originally I was splitting, for example, the base up into four parts and printing them individually and then screwing them together later. I decided to upgrade to a much larger printer, which was an Ender 5 Plus and this was excellent. It turned out to be just big enough to print the base in one go. This is the top rear portion of the case being printed. Uh, because it's a big cavity on the bottom and because there are protrusions on top, there's no way to print this without having a lot of support material. 
But when you have a big cavity like a shell, uh, you have to fill in all that plastic on the inside and then remove it after the print is done. A few things are more satisfying than getting out the entire large support structure all at once. Oh yeah. I also experimented with the more common small OLED for the MT32 Pi, but decided to stick with the big one in the end. Let's take a quick look inside. Okay, so I've already removed the screws. Uh, there's four screws for the keyboard cover that comes off just like that. Again, printed as one piece, except for the badge that I printed separately so I could get the dual color. And moving the USB keyboard out of the way. Up front, we can see the USB hub and the SD card reader. This is a SD to micro SD extension and it just winds its way underneath the DE10 Nano and plugs into the micro SD card slot that's back here. You can also see the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus here. This is what drives the MT32 Pi. And removing the rear cover here. So we have the DE10 Nano here. It is powered through the switch, through the DC barrel jack, which also powers the Raspberry Pi A3 directly. This is important because it avoids low voltage warnings on the screen um, that the Raspberry Pi can detect. The connection between the Raspberry Pi and the Mister is through uh, this port here that's called the Arduino compatible port. In order to facilitate the SD RAM cartridge, I installed these 90 degree headers and then uh, actually soldered these wires onto these short uh, header pins which go over here to the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi 3. You can also see this right angle Ethernet extension that goes out here to the external Ethernet port. So the hub at the front actually connects to one of these ports here. The other ones power the keyboard and the power that goes to the VGA converter which is held captively behind this 3D printed shell. So this second USB hub is connected through this right angle USB OTG adapter into the DE10 Nano. Audio is also extracted from the HDMI converter that goes to the 1 8 inch jack. The last thing to mention is that I had to make a few small modifications to the OLED screen to get it to work with the MT32 Pi, which was simply adding a resistor and capacitor network to the reset pin forming a power on reset circuit. Uh, these instructions are on the MT32 Pi wiki page in the Mr. section. So the big question is how well does it work? In short, it works great. For game consoles, it's very easy. I just put in the SD card for the system I want to use. It's pre-configured to load the core directly and go right to the ROM list. I select a game and I'm playing. I've settled on this Sega Saturn style USB controller, which has enough buttons for most systems on the Mister. Oh, wait, I forgot something. There we go, okay, moving on. Analog video quality from the Mister is simply fantastic, even through this cheap HDMI to VGA converter that I'm using. It's clean, there's no noise, the colors are great. It really has to be seen to be believed. Similarly for arcade games, um, I only have one here which is Donkey Kong Jr. Just put in the SD card, turn it on, and it's up in seconds. Oh wait, wrong monitor, use this one. Here I'm using an Xbox fight stick that has USB and just works great with the Mister. So I mentioned DOS and Amiga as systems that use the MT32 Pi, and Amiga uses 15 kilohertz for its video signal, so I just use my regular broadcast monitors that you've already seen. I probably won't be using this very much for DOS gaming since I have a nice Pentium 2 and Pentium 4 machine here in the same room, and since I got this large 19 inch monitor, there's actually not enough room on the desk to put the Mr. in front of it. But I'd like to demonstrate the MT32 Pi, so I'll load up The Secret of Monkey Island, one of my favorite adventure games. Oh, forgot about the DRM. Seventeen, nineteen. 
So you may be asking yourself, why did you make a case that has an integrated keyboard and this MT32 Pi display um, if you weren't gonna use it for DOS gaming? Well, for the keyboard, there's plenty of other classic computers that are supported by the Mester Project. Um, all the Atari 8-bit computers, the X68000, um, Commodore 64 and 128, there's just plenty of things you can do with the keyboard besides DOS gaming. And for the MT32 Pi display, I actually hope that other cores will support it actually just for messages or logos. You know, reminds me of um, a Sega Dreamcast VMU. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for joining me. Let me know in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like, what you think I should change if I print another revision of this case. And let me know what features you would have on your dream Mr. FPGA custom case. That's all for now. See you next time.